Okay, so we have another Zoomy lesson today. It's been a few weeks, so I'm doing some more lessons. Today is 2.4, the prior one we did shapes with loops. Today it is driving decisions. Just driving, driving decisions. When we walk around, we are always sensing our environment. We need to be able to sense op obstacles that might have come up along the way. This is a problem. Obviously it's a problem. Okay, so this is a problem for Zoomy with the forward function. With forward, Zoomy cannot check her sensors or her surroundings while driving. Imagine walk, walking around with your eyes closed and only opening opening them when you stop moving to decide your next move. In this lesson, you will learn how to use a new function that lets Zoomy multitask. You'll be able to drive and check sensors to make decisions. So I've already imported the libraries. I already did that. So next, run the following code and pick up Zoomy as she dri she's driving. What happens? So we're gonna run this. And if I pick her up, you can see, it doesn't matter what I do, she keeps driving. So that's the problem with forward. She's gonna keep driving no matter what go straight when you are walking what actions are being repeated right foot left foot right foot left foot zoomy can also take steps forward when these small steps are put in a loop zoomy will drive forward the driving function for a small step is zoomy go straight unlike forward parameters are not optional zoomy needs to know speed and heading or direction in the image below what is zoomy's heading so in this it's 30 degrees. Run the code below to see the code for this driving pattern using go straight. Reset the gyro, the, it will reset all the angles to zero. Then take 40 steps and then they're going to drive at a speed of 40 at a heading of negative 30 degrees. And then you have her stop. So I'm going to click into it and then I need to Oh, where's Ryan? There we go. There's Ryan. Okay, so she stops. And it should have shown that at the top, but I don't know why that went out, unless I was not seeing it properly. The stop at the end of the program is very important since Ghost Rate allows for smooth driving without stops in between. There's nothing to stop Zoomy from driving forever or until the battery dies. As after a for loop completes, the code will continue to the next line. Any code that is not part of the loop should not be indented. In the space below, practice using for loops in this new method of driving straight. Try changing this second heading parameter and estimate how many times it takes to drive a certain number of iterations. So I, I just did the same thing. 180 degrees, sorry, 180 steps. I took the S out accidentally. That's just type, that's a comment anyway. <clears throat> Pardon. And going to go straight for five miles an hour at a negative 90 degree angle and then stop. So we're gonna put Zoomy back and then I'm gonna click run. Oh, I wanna over here. And then we're going to click run. Should run, I don't see it running. Let's see again here. So 90 degree angle, negative 90. And she's driving really slow. And then she went that number of steps. The steps are incredibly tiny. Are you doing okay, Zooms? Zoomy, zoom, zoom. They're like cats with, they get the zoomies. Anyway, conditional self-driving cars are always making decisions based on sensory input. In this section, you will learn how to write a program that stops Zoomy from driving if, she, if she's upside down. To know if Zoomy, Zoomy is upside down, you're going to learn about a new function, get orientation. There are six states that Zoomy can be facing. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And as you can see, five is really the only state that you would expect that she would want to be facing. Use the code below to verify the six states. If you see zero, 
negative one or seven, Sumi is between states or the state is unknown. And unfortunately, when she's upside down, she keeps seeming to say seven, and I don't know why. But I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna run the code. And it's going to show the what she is. Ah, darn it. So right now she's five. So all it's doing is printing. Now it shows three, because she's on her one side. If I put her upside down, it shows seven. And it, it times out eventually, so. I've already tested the other numbers, but it, it showed seven. You'll just have to believe me if you didn't see it. Okay, then they talk about pseudocode, basically understanding what you want to program. So like check orientation, if orientation is five, drive, else if orientation is not five, stop, repeat for 100 iterations, something like that. Pseudocode, the goal is to write code that will only allow Zumi to drive while she is flat on the ground. In other words, Zumi will only drive if get orientation is state five. Before writing the code in Python, it is helpful to write pseudocode, which is a program that's written in plain language that a human can understand. So if statements, most of the pseudocode should be familiar except for the two middle lines where Zumi makes a decision based on the orientation. If statements or conditionals are used to make decisions within code, you actually use conditionals every day. Did my alarm go off? Yes, wake up, wake up, no, stay asleep, or wake up on your own. The alarm is the condition that needs to be true to wake up, else if the condition is false, the program will execute something different. In Python, if statements follow a format, format similar to this one, if alarm goes, up, goes off, I will wake up, else I will stay asleep. Before running the code cell below, see the values of variables x and y. Can you predict what the output will be? So x equals 10, y equals 30, if x is greater than y, print x is greater than y, else elif, x is equal to y, print x is equal to y, else, darn it, else print x is less than y. Okay, so it's gonna say x is less than y, but I'm not gonna really run this code because we don't care about that code. I understand what that code's telling us, right? It's just comparing. So the equals is a double sign. Notice the double equal sign for checking if two values are equal. This is the comparator you will be using to compare the value of the orientation to the values that you choose. Using your knowledge of for loops, go straight and get orientation, fill in the code below to have Zoomy drive forward for 200 steps until Zoomy's orientation is upside down. Don't forget to put a stop at the end of the for loop. So I'm hoping that Zoomy is still working because the connection was reset. So I don't know if Zoomy is still working. So I uh, just to explain what this code, what I wrote, I got four X in range 200 because they want us to do 200 steps. Zoomy update angles, orientation get, Zoomy get orientation, and we're resetting the gyro. If orientation equals five, she's gonna go straight at a speed of 10 and no angle. Else, if the orientation is not equal to five, Zoomy's going to stop. Now, this is not what they told me. They wanted us to do it if she were upside down, which would be equal six. But I'm just gonna do if she's not equal to five, that she should stop. And then we had needed another stop so that she'll stop and not keep driving at the end of this for loop, okay? All right, so I'm gonna try to run it and I'm gonna hope it's gonna run. Yeah, and see if I pick her up, she stops. But if I put her back, she goes again. And then she'll keep going until she reached basically that 200 steps. So there we go. Zoomies doing good. Um, I'm pretty happy with the little programs we've been doing. And I, I think we made some progress. All right. Take care from me and Zoomy and have a good night.